So we are doing deflection testing on various hand guards uh, that are currently available in the market to compare them all for rigidity of both the hand guard itself and the mounting system to see where we lie in regards to the competition. Now, when it comes to hand guard deflection, there's two things you're looking for. You're looking for both deflection under load and then rigidity of the mounting system as a whole and your zero shift or return to zero. Right now what I'm checking is uh, loaded deflection. So I'm applying an even load to all of these, a fixed distance away from the upper. Uh, so I zero indexed off of my upper in this clamp. Picatinny clamp pulls onto the upper so that we know that our um, that's fixed and that is not gonna move. And then we mount all of these different hand guards based on the manufacturer's instructions. They're all 15 inch hand guards, uh, but due to various shapes, cuts, reliefs, things like that, I can pick everything up cleanly at 14 inches. And that way I'm getting the most exaggerated deflection in the test. The further out you go, the bigger the lever arm, the more deflection you're gonna get. So it's very easy to see what's going on out at this distance. Everything's fair, everything's on the same plane, all on the same upper, and loading them to a constant load, and I'm writing down the measurements to compare ourselves to the competitors. And so far, we are uh, the best average across the board. whoop de doo what does it all mean, Basil? Why are we doing this? Why do we care about deflection? Well, we care about deflection and we care about weight. Are we the lightest handguard out of all of these? No, we're not, but we sure are the stiffest. So, these are the actual results from the test. These are the actual measured weights of all the handguards. As you can see, we are the lowest. And these ones are comparable, I'd say within 10% of deflection. We have 60 thousandths right here, is that cutoff line. We're at 47 and 50. Now, these comparable ones within 10%, are not nearly as light. They're four ounces heavier at least. And then all these other ones, you got your cheapos up top, triple the deflection for the same weight. So what does the deflection actually do to you? Well, say you have a forward mounted light system, optic system, something zeroed at 100 yards, say a laser, say you're shooting at night. When you start loading that bipod forward, your barrel is staying fixed zeroed at the location it was zeroed. And if your light's mounted properly to your upper, that's gonna stay zeroed. Your forward mounted light system now, that you're loading your bipod forward, putting a resultant force down, and it's rotating down independently. Now, all we have is 14 inches, but you can extend that triangle out to 100 yards to get your MOA shift at 100 yards, but MOAs are boring. So I asked Jeeves to Google a Bing for me and tell me how big the average American pig is. And he said it's 3.1 feet. So instead of MOA, we have pig shift at 100 yards. You might be telling yourself, well, Drew, I can just go to Midwest Industries and get a handguard for $130. And it's a quarter ounce lighter. You're right, but you're paying half the price for a third of the strength. How many pigs are you gonna miss by because you copped out on a fucking handguard? Well, if you wanna save half the price, you get triple the deflection. Instead of missing by a third of a pig, you're now gonna miss by over one whole pig height. And that's almost two pigs. You're not holding top of the pig, you're holding center mass. So you're now putting that bullet right in the fucking dirt if you're using your laser. Is it really worth saving that money for triple the fucking deflection for a quarter ounce of weight savings? No, strength and weight. Both matter. Science. <laughs>